Hi again, friends. I'm so glad you made it back for another day of a story and some activities with me. Um, it's a really good one today. I'm really excited about it. I hope you've liked the other two also. Those have been um, really fun and some of my favorite stories. Um, how are you feeling? Remember yesterday we read the book um, and we did some activities about how you're feeling. Uh, take a second to check in with yourself. Are you feeling happy, sad, worried, confused? And remember that all of those feelings are okay. Um, it really helps if you can talk to someone or write it down or draw a picture. Um, let's see, how am I feeling? I'm feeling, I'm feeling happy. I'm recording this video during spring break, but it's Monday, so it's the beginning of the week. Um, I'm happy to kind of do some different things this week that make it feel um, maybe a little more relaxed, build in a little more fun, but I'm also sad. Usually this week, um, the girls and I will go down and visit my family in New York and Connecticut and do something fun. Um, and we're not able to do that this year. So I'm feeling a little bit sad about that too. And both of those things are okay. And remember, sometimes you can feel two things at the same time. And maybe that's a little confusing. Um, but that's how I'm feeling this morning. But let's get into it. We are reading a book today. Um, I'll tell you in a minute. But you are going to need, if you want to do the projects with me after, you are going to need a paper and pencil, just like we have the last couple of days. And if you want to color it with me, um, I'm going to color this one because I'm really excited about how cute it is. You're gonna need a black and gray marker or crayon or both. I have both because I'm gonna try something new. So paper, pencil, black and gray, marker, crayon, color, pencil. You're gonna need two stuffed animals and try to make it so that one of the stuffed animals is bigger than the other, but not by too much. Does that make sense? They're kind of um, similar sizes, but maybe one is bigger than the other got a koala and this little ducky. And then you're going to need um, some things to that can tie or clip. So I've got hair rubber bands. We have lots of those in our house, hair rubber bands. I've got um, a clothespin and these bobby pins type of clip. So if you have things that can tie, clip, close things off, you're going to need those for our hands-on project. Um, is that it? That's it. So you're gonna be, in a minute, you're going to pause the video. You're going to go get a paper and a pencil. And if you want to color it, get um, a black and a gray coloring tools as well. You're going to need two stuffed animals, one a little bit bigger than the other one, and rubber bands or clips or clothespins or something that can squeeze that shut. And um, that's it. So pause the video. Go get those things and I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, let's get going. So I picked a book, um, a nonfiction book for today called Koalas because it's so fun reading picture books like I've been reading the last couple of days, but it's so important, my friends, so important to read nonfiction books as well. And nonfiction books are books that are true and real about true and real and <laughs> actual things. Um, so a lot of times we'll see books about animals, plants, um, the world, kind of science, things like that. So I picked a book called Koalas because I think they are so cute. Oh my gosh, look at them. This is by National Geographic Kids and it's a scholastic book. And um, as I was kind of researching ideas for projects and activities, I realized that today, Wednesday, is Earth Day. It's Earth Day, which is a day where we stop and we celebrate the Earth. So I'm so excited that this koala book aligns with Earth Day. Um, and we're going to talk about that a little more later, but let's get into it. Look at this, koalas. So this book reads a little bit different than a picture book would. There's going to be a lot of different information on the page. So you might notice that I don't quite read everything on the page, but I'm going to point out the important parts of kind of the information. This part, this page is called the table of contents. So it tells about the different sections of the book and what page they're on. So if I only wanted to learn about baby koalas, I'd go right to page 20, but we'll get there. Who am I? I live in the trees eating green leaves. I have a black nose and a long and long claws on my toes. My big ears are furry and I'm not in a hurry. Who am I? 
a koala. Ugh, look at that face. So cute. Where koalas live. Koalas live in a country called, called Australia. They live in forests and wooded areas. They live in the mountains and on the coast. So here's a big map of the world. This is where we live in North America. And Australia is just about as far away as you can get. All the way down here. Am I pointing to it? <laughs> and then they showed you kind of a close-up of Australia. See, that's the same continent country. And the koalas are on um, this coast. So they live very far away from, from us, which is unfortunate because they are so cute. Pouch animals. Koalas look a little like teddy bears, but they are not bears at all. Koalas are mammals called marsupials. They carry their babies in pouches. Kangaroos and wombats are marsupials too. So wombat and the pouch is down here, maybe under on its belly, but it's walking on all fours, not standing up. And most of us know kangaroos, right? Where their pouch is on their tummy like this. Look at that. So cute. So here's a little section of information, and I'm not going to read that part. But if you wanted to come back um, and pause later and have a, have a grown-up read that to you, you can go ahead and do that. Built to climb, a koala's body is perfect for living in trees. Look at him go. And here's kind of a picture of um, a koala with labeled parts about what makes their body perfect for climbing trees. So they have long arms to wrap around the trees. Their front paws have two thumbs and three fingers. Two thumbs, oh my word. These help grab branches. Long claws dig into the trunks and branches. Can you see how long those claws are? Oh my word. Uh, their paws have pads that keep koalas from slipping. Their strong legs help a koala climb up and down the trees. The fur on its bottom is extra thick. It is built in seat cushion and its body curls up to fit between the branches. So their bodies were really made for climbing, huh? Life in the trees. Koalas are good climbers. They spend most of their time in trees. This is their habitat. Habitat means where they live. Koalas sleep in trees too. They doze off in some funny places. Could you sleep like this? <laughs> That's crazy. I definitely could not sleep like that. So there's a koala in its habitat, its natural home, and it really is curled around that branch, isn't it? Sleeping away. A koala lives in a small area in its habitat. The area has about 100 trees. This is its territory. Male koalas have a scent patch on their chest. And they show that kind of labeled part, a scent patch on their chest. They rub it on the trees. This tells other koalas to stay out of their territory. Hmm. I wonder what that scent patch smells like, if the human nose could smell it. But I guess other koalas can smell it. Picky eaters. Koalas eat lots of eucalyptus leaves, but they only eat from a few kinds of eucalyptus trees. To get enough food, koalas eat for about five hours every day. Koalas mostly eat and sleep. Let's see that. How does that sound? Eating, sleeping, eating, sleeping. Could you be a koala? You're so cute. <laughs> Six cool koala facts. Koalas can jump from tree to tree. Koalas hardly drink any water. They get most of their water from leaves. A koala's fur protects the animal from the heat, cold, and rain. Koalas are very active at night. They like midnight snacks. Koalas have fingerprints just like we do. Whoa, that's cool. And eucalyptus leaves smell like cough drops. Koalas do too. Oh my gosh. A koala actually smells like a cough drop. A eucalyptus cough drop, yes. Baby koalas. A baby koala is called a joey. When it's born, it does not have any hair. Oh my word, that does not look like a koala. It is also blind. The joey stays in its mother's pouch for about six months. It drinks milk and grows bigger and bigger. The joey is the size of a 
jelly bean at birth. Whoa, we all know about jelly beans from Easter a couple a couple days ago. Can you imagine? That's so tiny. And this is a joey peeking out of its mom's pouch. <laughs> Soon the joey be comes out of the pouch. It hangs on mom's chest or rides on her back. The young koala learns how to climb and hang on so it can live safely in the trees. Look at it getting a piggyback ride. Maybe a koala back ride. In danger. Koalas need land with trees, but people are cutting down trees to make farms, roads, and buildings. There is less land for koalas. They are in danger. Koalas get hurt too. They get hit by cars or hurt by pet dogs. So look at it, it's living like, this is a neighborhood. There's a house over here. This is the fence of someone's yard and there's a koala in the tree. So if people that live in those neighborhoods aren't careful, those koalas can get hurt. I would love to look out my window and see a koala. <laughs> All I see are squirrels, how about you? Helping koalas. Luckily for koalas, there are hospitals just for them. Doctors and nurses help koalas that are sick or hurt. Koala hospitals help thousands of koalas every year. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, look at this guy. He's got a cast on. But they're getting better. Koalas get help in other ways too. Road signs tell drivers to watch out for koalas. Tunnels and bridges can help koalas cross roads, but koalas don't always know where the safe places to cross are. Saving eucalyptus trees is the best way to help koalas. Trees are homes for koalas. So just like in Vermont, we might see like a moose crossing sign maybe. They see a koala crossing in Australia. What in the world? These pictures show close up views of things in koalas worlds. So this is another page that I'm not gonna read to you. It's not gonna really help us with the story, but you can come back, maybe um, pause the video there and have someone read that to you if you want to learn more about koalas. Koalas by National Geographic Kids. Oh my goodness. I don't know about you, but I think they're very cute. At first I thought they were cute, but their nose, um, I thought that was a little weird, but it's really grown on me. And now I think their nose is one of their cutest parts with those big ears. Oh my goodness, you all. Do you like koalas? Maybe you like koalas more now than you did before I read the story. You know a little bit more about them, hopefully. All right, that was a long story. Um, so we are going to do a movement break. And I remember reading in this story that koalas can jump from tree to tree. So we're going to jump like koalas. Now remember... Your grown-ups are having a little break right now, I hope, right? Because we can do all of these activities together. So if your grown-up is doing something where they they can't have you jumping around right now, um, then maybe just watch or maybe just do this really gently, okay? So we are going to – it's not going to take up too much space. I don't have too much space here either. But um, you're going to start with your feet kind of – oh, I've got my drawing in the way – Start with your feet in one spot and you're just going to jump and you can try one foot like a leap or you can try to jump with two feet at the same time and you're going to try to go as far as you can like you're a koala jumping from one tree to another tree. So I'm going to stand here and I'm going to leap. So I'm going to put one foot forward and try to get to the farther side of the couch. Ready? And land. And now when I go back, I'm going to do it on two feet. I'm going to try to jump. Oh, do you think I made it if I were a koala? And if you can't jump right now, maybe you can do a big, gentle step. And like you're a koala going from one tree to another tree. You can try that a few more times to get your wiggles out before we start our drawing. And I am really excited about this drawing, you all, because it's cute. It's really cute, and I think it's pretty um, simple enough that you should really be able to do it with me, but if you get frustrated, just stop and watch, okay? Not a big deal. What I like about this um, picture, though, is that you can draw it using thinking about the shapes of letters, 
And so even our preschool friends will be able to think about their letters that your teachers have been teaching you and you will have a really cute koala. So you're gonna get your paper and your pencil. And when I'm doing this, I'm gonna keep in mind that I, I wanna make my lines light. I'm not gonna push as hard as I can because I might need to erase to get the shapes that I want. And maybe you do too. So here we go. You've got your pencil and your paper, make light lines. The first shape you're gonna make is a Y and you're gonna make kind of a big Y. So I'm gonna start kind of near the top corner on this side and come down that way. So that's a pretty big line. And then from kind of the middle, I'm gonna go up this way and make a Y. And I'm gonna grab a tissue so I can stop sniffling in your faces. How about that? That would be smart. All right, so you've got your big Y. Can you see it? You can kind of see it. I did it pretty light because I might need to erase it. Can I fix that at all? Can you see that? Okay, so I've got a big Y. And then next I'm gonna take kind of a C shape and I'm gonna put the C shape in two different spots. I'm gonna come between the top two parts of the Y Oh my goodness, I'm really not sure you can see that. I might need to do my lines darker so you can follow along with me. That's a little better. You don't need to go over that dark. I don't need to be able to see yours, but I want you to be able to see mine. So I'm gonna take this C shape and I'm gonna kind of flip it over a little bit and I'm gonna go from kind of the inside of the Y at the top here to the inside at the Y of the Y at the top there, and I don't want it to actually touch the Y. So watch what I'm gonna do. I kind of made my two lines to mark out where I want it to be, and I'm gonna curve up and back down. Can you see that? Oh yeah, you can see that. Okay, so see how it's not quite at the tippy top of the Y, and it's also not touching the Y, it's kind of down and in between, but it does go really wide. So if you drew like a little thing like that, you're gonna to wanna to erase that and do a bigger one. You want it to go close, but not all the way to the sides of the Y. Now we're going to take that C shape again that we just did and go from the top of the Y, the very top of the Y, but not quite touching, um, to over on the head with a C shape. So I went from the top of the Y over near part of the C of the head, and I'm gonna do that on the other side also. So the top of the Y, but not quite touching, and a C shape over to the top. How's that looking? How's, this, how's yours looking? I'm not sure if you can tell yet what part of the koala that is. Maybe you can. We're also gonna add um, an O or maybe Maybe more like an oval. So I said this was all letters, but you can do a circle or an O here, but I'm gonna show you something about this picture of the koala, is that its nose is really, it's not a perfect circle, is it? It's more like an oval, like an egg shape almost. So instead of a circle nose, because I want my koala to be as cute as it can be, I'm gonna do kind of an oval. So I'm gonna come right in the middle of the face though, and just do this kind of oval shape. That's pretty good. It's a little lopsided, but does it have to be perfect? I hope not. All right, I'm also gonna take kind of the C shape again and come, oh, I forgot one. <laughs> Definitely need a C shape here. So I'm gonna come um, on the other side on now kind of this angle of the Y, a kind of across and down a little bit from where this first C shape was. So I'm going, imagine going over and down a little bit. And I'm gonna do a big C with like a big scoop down towards the bottom of the Y. So I'm gonna land right about there. Can you see that? And I really want that to be um, a really curved line. I don't want it to be just a tiny bump. So I'm gonna do a big bump and land down at the bottom. See, that's that's like a real big C with a big bump. If you just did like a straight line, you're gonna wanna erase that and go back and do a big bump. All right, I'm back on track. So now I'm gonna come 
um, from the bottom of the bump, I'm going to go in and up a little bit. I'm not actually drawing right now. I'm just kind of getting my spot. I'm going to come up here a little bit. So inside the C and I'm going to do, um, it's like a, now like a backwards C towards the bottom of this. So it's going to go up towards the line, the Y, and then down to here. Do you see that? Kind of looks like a rainbow shape, like an arc, arch. And then I'm going to do kind of a, almost like an eye, but maybe with a little squiggle at the top, up inside the Y, closer to the middle. And this line is just going to go um, straight down to the first Y. How's that looking? If you're getting frustrated because my directions are bad, you can just pause. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be as clear as possible, but I realize it's imperfect. So, so far you've got the first Y, this kind of upside down C at the top, the little C's on top of that, the oval in the middle, the big C down here with an upside down C there, and kind of a, I guess it's kind of a J. Like a sideways J. Can you tell yet what it is? I imagine you can. You have a couple cl clues. Um, all right, I'm gonna do O's up here on its face and another C shape right there. Oh yeah, how cute. Okay, you with me? We are going to do a little line that connects this J shape to the C shape. And then you're gonna come at this point down here and make kind of an E, an uppercase E. So I'm gonna do the line and then one, two, three. And the same thing here. I'm gonna do this line, one, two, three. See how that's an E and I said I'm mostly gonna be able to make this with letters, the shapes of letters. Okay, one last part. At the first side of the Y up here, you're gonna kind of make another line that is parallel to that. It's going in the same direction. But when you get a little bit down, kind of near the E you just made, you're gonna make it hook up. That makes sense, kind of like an L you just made. Boop. And then you're gonna come parallel to that hook up. And then once you get back to the parallel of the first line, you're gonna go down. And if you're feeling super fancy, you can try some shapes like that. <gasps> Do you see what that is? All right, if you want to color it with me, this video is getting long, but I can't, I can't not color it. I'm going to take my gray and do this part and his back and his foot here and his arm here and his tummy here. And I suppose I should do the rest of his head. And his nose is black, right? And his eyes. They are really white, I think, with a little black spot in the middle and his smile. And I'm gonna do his claws. Remember the size of those claws? Oh my goodness. All right, I thought I would color in more, but have you watched me coloring enough? You can finish that on your own. I also realized I forgot a brown for the tree. So I am gonna go back and color that later. And it's kind of gray everywhere. And then when I get brown, I'm gonna do brown on the tree and green for the eucalyptus leaves. And have you got a little koala climbing on a tree, ready to eat some eucalyptus and then fall asleep? He's so cute. Thanks for trying that with me. But if you got frustrated and needed to stop, I totally get it because my directions were 
Not the best. Do you need to move with me again? Ready to do some koala jumps? All right, koala jumps or a big leap or just a big giant step. Ready? Get your wiggles out. Because we have one more activity to do. Think we made it? If we were a koala from one tree to the other? I hope so. Okay, last activity. You have your stuffed animals. One slightly bigger than the other, and it's okay if they're much bigger than this. And you have something to try to attach them together. So I am thinking of the book. I'm gonna try to find the page really quickly because I have kept you here forever, friends. Just don't seem to wanna let you go. Oh, where's the page with the koala? The baby koala on the mom's back. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that one. So your task right now is to get your two animals to look like that picture where one is attached to the other. <laughs> look how cute. Um, using just the tools you brought so that it's like the koala getting a piggyback ride. And that when you're, when you're done and you know you've done it right, you will um, be able to pick up just one and the other one is attached to it. So let's see, I'm gonna get my duck and I could just do something simple, like take my big rubber band and just wrap it around the middle <laughs> and get the duck to be getting a koala back ride. That works. I noticed that this koala has really, I'm at a very awkward angle. I noticed that this koala has really long arms. So I was also thinking maybe I could take the koala around the duck. Have you ever seen a koala riding a duck down by the bay? I don't know. And I'm just gonna ooh, wrap my rubber band around. Oh my goodness. Is that the cutest thing you've seen today? <laughs> so I want you to try that. Try it in a couple different ways with a couple different tools. I had also brought um, clothespins, rubber bands, little hair clips like that. So try that in a couple different ways. Um, I'm gonna move on with the video to end it because it's getting very long, but you keep trying that until you find a way to get your one animal to give your other animal a ride so that you only have to hold one. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay, I'm almost done, I promise. If you want to do more, I kept you here a long time, but if you have more time and you want to try some more stuff, I have two websites for you to go to. The first is go to Google and type in Nat Geo at home. And these are all just amazing resources about the earth and animals and just different things um, that are not only good for just Earth Day, but just to know about the world. So if you go to Nat Geo at home, they have a bunch of activities for kids. I didn't find that much koala stuff, but you better believe I watched the video um, called Animal LOL, where they were doing a voiceover of a panda conversation. That was good stuff. So that's some more good stuff about animals. Awesome for Earth Day. If you wanna try another craft because you just love koalas and can't get enough, you're gonna type into Google, cute newspaper koala craft and it's by I Heart Crafty Things. And you need newspaper and um, glue and scissors and some different size circles and black and white paper and you will get a koala that I just, I couldn't help it, I had to make it. So if you want to do more um, and you can do some of this independently um, so that you have more koala pictures because uh, this might just not be enough for you if you're like me, that you need all the koala things, then you can go get the supplies and make this koala craft as well. It was pretty fun and took about five to 10 minutes, including finding all the supplies I needed for it. So that's it, my friends. I'm really going to let you go now. Uh, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little bit about koalas um, and stuck with me through drawing that picture of the koala. Uh, if you didn't, that's okay. So 
here's another little um, teaser for Friday's video. Friday's video is going to be another nonfiction story. And you are going to need some things that have to do with trees, like leaves, sticks, acorns, things from outside. So since today is Earth Day for you, get outside or tomorrow if you have more time tomorrow. And if you wanna be ready for Friday's video, collect some of those things today and we'll be ready to do an awesome project. I hope you go get outside and have some fun. The girls and I are off on a little adventure to enjoy the day. It's Monday right now, it's sunny. We're gonna have some fun and enjoy this beautiful earth. I miss you and I hope you're having fun with these books and projects and I hope to see you all really soon. Bye.